Faith Church, hope you're well. It's uh, Monday, December 14th, another edition of House to House. Really want to encourage you in the Advent readings through Mark. Uh, keep at it. If you, if you fell off the wagon, got off track, that's okay. Just get back on and pick up where we are and, 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 and read. It's a little bit like, you know, exercise. You try to run or lift weights or do push-ups, whatever. You miss a day or two, all right, get back, get back on it. Um, that's okay. Uh, it's so uh, important that we are trying to be in God's Word together. And so today's reading is from Mark chapter 10, verses 1 to 31. First part of that chapter, I want to focus just for a few minutes on this famous story that happens, Jesus' encounter with this um, rich young ruler. It's the, the gospel is in, I mean, the uh, three gospels include this story, Matthew and Luke as well. <clears throat> and collectively, we learn that this man is, he's got it all. He's young. He's got his health. He's rich. Got a lot of money. And he's uh, a man of some authority. He's a ruler of some th some some um, some sort. So, in a way, he's um, you know he's got it all. Um, and uh, there's a lot in this story that we could look at. I could spend hours thinking about and reflecting on what, what happens here. Um, you know, at the end of it, he he makes a decision. His his and he reveals that his devotion is misplaced. His affection is misplaced. He loves his money, his wealth more than he loves God. He has to choose and he chooses his wealth. He's sad about it, but he still makes a choice. And it's not only that his, his uh, affection is misplaced, he's deceived because he has in his mind that his, that his physical material wealth is more valuable than the riches of the kingdom of God, which, which is a deception because he, he won't be able to hold on to his material wealth for long. He's giving, giving, giving up what is eternal for what is temporary. Um, but what I want to, really want to focus here in this story is, is a, a little phrase in verse 21 that always strikes me, particularly in Mark's version of this story. You know, this guy comes and he wants to know what to do to inherit eternal life. Jesus talks about the commandments and he says, I followed all these. And then Jesus, uh, it's what Mark says this, it says uh, in verse 21, Jesus looking at him, loved him. A little simple, little almost a throwaway phrase, or you might read right past it. But here's here's Jesus, and he looks at this guy, and he knows he's about to challenge him. He's about to tell the man, "You got to give up everything, give all your possessions away, sell them, give the money to the poor." Jesus may even know that this man can't do it, and yet he it says as he looked at him, and I imagine it was just he just gazes at him, and, and he loves him. He loves this man. Um, it's hard to think about Jesus looking at anybody actually and, and in scorn. And Jesus looked at this person in scorn. He gets angry, but he, his, it's just striking to me that he loves this guy. And he does this again right before he challenges him. You know, we live in this culture and age where we think love just means affirmation and acceptance. And uh, I, I just, whatever is in your life I have to accept, it's, that's not love. Clearly, Jesus is about to give this man a hard, hard challenge. And yet he, he loves him. He does it because he loves him. He knows what's best for him. Um, I think about Romans 5, 8, where we're told that God demonstrates his love for us in this, that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. We see God's love that even, even at our worst, even when we are unable to, to follow him, God loves us enough to even die for us. It's remarkable. Two quick things out of this. First, obviously, I think we can, we can be assured here that Jesus looks at us and loves us. Wherever you are today, in whatever state you are, I believe Jesus looks at you and he, and he loves you. Um, he just That's who he is. He can't help but love you. The second thing, though, is is convicting for me, and this really struck me today, is it's just the way I look at people. When I look at other people around me, do I look at them and love them? And honestly, not always. There's some people, friends of mine, Christians in the church, um, some of them, my wife, my kids, people that I like, I look at them and I love them. It's easy, it just comes natural. And yet there's, there's other people that I it wouldn't be true of. You know, I, do I look at the cashier who's 
taking a long time to check me out because she's new at her job. Do I look at her and love her? The, the homeless person I see who set up a tent um, right on the sidewalk downtown, do I look at that person and immediately love them? What about the, um, the politician, fill in the blank, whoever it is? Um, do I look at that person and love him or her? What about the, uh, the rich person? The person that I see in our society who's wealthy beyond all imagination and has great authority, do I look at that person and love them? It's, it's pretty um, convicting to me. And I'm not talking about approval. We don't have to approve of everyone and everyone's actions, but, but um, it's convicting to me that I, I don't look at people always the same way Jesus looks at people. My prayer would be that I would be able to stand more just firmly in the gaze of Jesus' love so that his love for me might change the way that I look at people. But if I would receive the love he has for me in a, in a deeper way, it, that it would change the way that I see others. I really want to be the kind of person that instinctively looks at another person and loves them. Um, and I think the only way for that to happen in me, because I know myself, is for the, the love of Christ to sink even more deeply into me. And my prayer would be for you as well, that we would, we would be people who would be changed by Christ in this way, to receive his love and then to learn to extend it. A um, couple quick <clears throat> reminders. Tomorrow morning, <clears throat> we're going to pray together. Every Tuesday morning at 7.30, we meet on Zoom and we'll walk through a psalm and, and a part of scripture and, and pray together. Love for you to join us. Some of you have been every week. It's been good. It's just half an hour. And the link is in the email here. And then looking ahead to Wednesday, really hope you'll join us for our fourth, uh, third Wednesday, Wednesday evening Advent service. This service we will focus on, uh, it's a candlelight memorial service, remembering those that we love and know who have um, died this last year. Um, and, uh, and also just remembering all those who've passed away, especially from this COVID virus. Um, hundreds of thousands of people just in our own nation. So it'll be important that we do this together. I hope you'll be with us at seven o'clock Wednesday. Um, wherever you are, I pray that you would know the Father's love for you, that he looks at you in love and know God's grace through Christ and the unity of the spirit that we experience in him. Peace.